yo, yo, what's up, everybody? It's your b -b 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 boy. Do, do, do the drum. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like the video, please hit that sub button if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell to let you know when I post another video for you guys. And hit that like button. And if you like video game content, check out my video game channel, Do the John Gaming. Link is down below in the description. Let's get into the video, shall we? This is a miracle every day. Eyes open by Jesus.net. Um, let's see what it's about. Get my headphones on and let's play it. The church in Egypt has been praying for many years now. Uh, feeling from the Holy Spirit that God wants to do great things in our nation. Looking to the reality and looking to what God wants to do, you have only one hope, is to pray and cry for God. God, come, rend the heavens, come and make amazing things, show your name, show how great you are in Egypt. We've, be, we've seen God answering prayer in an amazing way. Uh, a momentum of prayer had started in Egypt, especially the last 15 years. We start seeing the uh, spirit of prayer. This is where you come and you feel you are not trying to pray. It's like a wave, it's like a wind that takes your, your sailing boat easily. It moves it. That's the spirit of prayer, and especially in the last 8 to 10 years. A prayer meeting in our church that has grown from 200 to 600 to 800. Now, when you have a prayer meeting, you will have between at least 12 to 1400 minimum praying. And the main focus is to pray for a revival. Um, and, and, and this is not a something that can be done by people or by men. It's a work of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, for the last few months in 2010, we felt something big is going to happen in Egypt. Uh, things are going to fall down. Even we had even more specific words and prophecies about Mubarak, about what will happen in Egypt. And uh, to be honest, what happened was a lot more than we, uh, we were expecting. During these difficult times, people are so open to listen more about God and look for hope and answers. Uh, they have seen everything they know falling down in front of them. Systems, regimes, leaders. A lot of things are revealed or exposed to them. And so they say, is there any answer for our problems and challenges? And this is a time, a great time. Actually, when, when nations go through difficult times, this can make people harden their hearts more. But if the church is praying and difficulties are coming in the middle of this time, as Isaiah 19, it says, and the Egyptians will cry for a savior and God will answer them. I think this is what's happening. Uh, so many doors are open for the gospel to witness, to share the gospel with, with many people around. So we see more people coming to know the Lord more than I've ever seen in my life, I've been in the ministry for 30 years and I'm not the only one saying this, but everyone I know around are saying we've never seen any days like this. One church is not enough, one denomination is not enough. You are building the kingdom of God. If you want to build the kingdom of God, you have to work in unity. Yep. Unity is something I believe is very precious on God's heart, that you come together as the one body of Christ in the nation and cry for the Lord. We felt this is really uh, needed in Egypt that we cannot as a, as a church in Egypt do it by ourselves or do it alone. We needed to pray. So we extended the, 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 the hands and heart of love to others. We start praying on a small level, sometimes secretly with leaders from the Orthodox Church, which is a very historical, traditional church, but strong in faith for 2,000 years now. It was like uh, the, the, the barriers fall down between the, the two churches. Little by little this was growing and on the 11th of November 2011 when fights were 
taking place in streets of Cairo. People were killed. 45,000 people gathered from all denominations in the cave church, praying and singing and shouting and clapping all the night. I remember very well at three o'clock in the morning, uh, the, the people start by themselves, their own initiative, shouting Yeshua, Yeshua, which is Jesus in Arabic, clapping Yeshua, Yeshua. And they went on for 11 minutes. Now, I have never been in a place like this, but one of the leaders had said this. He said, we're doing two things, uh, repenting for not having Jesus as the head of the church for so many years, or the leader of the church, and as an act of faith of putting him in his throne again in Egypt. So this was an historical night. It had a great impact in Egypt. Uh, it had great impact on other churches in the whole Arab world because it was on live on TV. But we are still in the storm. We are still in the middle of the storm. What we see, what's happening is God is coming to, uh, to shake our nation. He said, I will shake the nations. I will shake earth and heaven that all idols will fall down. It's exactly, it's Isaiah 19, 1. The idols of Egypt will tremble. When God come and shake, the masks fall down. Revealing, exposing, light is coming. So the corruption is known, tyrants are uh, known, uh, injustice is known, uh, everything is clear. It's like Egyptians, their eyes are getting open. So everything that is not made by his hand will fall down and people will accept the unshakable kingdom of God. Hmm. I'll leave that net link up there if you guys want to check it out. <sighs> Unbelievable. I can't imagine living like that. I didn't knew it was like I didn't know Egypt was that bad. I'm sure there's pretty like that all over the place across seas, but <sighs> fortunately America doesn't talk much about that stuff. Because we live in our America bubble where it's America dream and all oh, America is the greatest country in the whole wide world. We don't care about other nations' problems. We got it all figured out. And this isn't me not hating on America. But if America was the greatest country in the world, we would be doing more to help other people out. Christ, our government doesn't even want to help our, their, their own citizens out. And it's sad. And America was founded around the Bible. America was founded and raised founded and the briefs was based on the Bible. I don't know where and when or what year or whatever things all got all screwed up because way before I was even born. But Just sad. I don't even think it would be for slavery, for that matter. Joys of governments. Anyways, I don't have much to say besides it's sad that they had to go through this. They shouldn't have to. Sad that most nations leaders don't like give a shit about their own citizens. But I can tell you one thing. There's one president, one king, one ruler 
who will forever be king, president, ruler, whatever. And that's the Lord. That's Jesus Christ. And he does care about all of us. Just got to believe it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. And you are loved.